Hi, this is your captain speaking. Uh, 2016, long point. As always, like every year, we've got a couple rule adjustments, couple rule changes. So I'm going to clarify those here in the video with my assistants, William and Josh, and behind the camera, Dana Rudd. First thing, um, as I said, we've made a couple of updates this year. The first thing that you're going to see in the rules document is that we've reorganized the material. Should be easier to read. It's divided up into two sections one for fighters and one for staff. If it's your first time reading the long point rules, you should read the entire document, including the staff section. It'll help you understand what's going on behind the scenes. Also, the detailed descriptions of how the judges are scoring points is in the staff section, not in the fighter section. Uh, that said, if you are familiar with the long point rules and how this works generally, just reading the fighter section and the cheat sheet on the back page uh, will usually get you about as far as you need to go, especially when combined with this video. Um, the, uh, the first thing that I want to emphasize here is, is equipment. We'll take a look at my, my assistants here. Uh, the first thing which is a, a change this year is the addition of a brightly colored tip for your sword. Uh, you can use a brightly colored arrowhead tip or you can simply put brightly colored tape over the existing tip of your sword if it's a properly rolled or, or swollen or uh, flattened out tip uh, for safety's sake. The fluorescent tape, in part, is to identify something like, say, uh, should a sword break or whatnot, we're able to see that more immediately. Uh, but the primary reason for the fluorescent tip is actually to help judges see a thrust. Exactly. Uh, now, I want to talk real quick about equipment. Uh, a couple things that happen most years. I want to talk about gloves. Gloves like these, absolutely appropriate. Everything is in the book. Uh, what's not going to be appropriate is going to be an unmodified lacrosse glove or an unmodified red dragon glove. Just adding best fingertip protectors to a red dragon glove is not sufficient. Uh, we had a couple of injuries uh, on that account last year. So if you're going to wear some kind of modified, like a destroyer mod, um, uh, a red dragon glove or a lacrosse glove, you're going to make sure that uh, you want to make sure that it gets approved by tournament staff uh, before things begin. Other things that tend to happen every year: uh, William here is fully dressed up. I don't see any major exposed skin. He's got all the protections that he needs to have. He's good to go. Josh here, he's forgotten his knee pads, forgotten his shin pads. He's wearing shorts, so even if he was wearing knee pads and shin pads, there'd be a big section of exposed flesh back here. The section of exposed flesh uh, we're trying to cover uh, for a number of reasons. Some of them are safety. A lot of it, to be entirely, entirely honest, is that if a burr or something nicks you, you don't bleed on the carpet. Okay, you guys can relax a little bit. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to talk real quick about some of the things that have changed as far as point values go. Uh, last year, I think the point values were 0, 3, 5, and 6, something along those lines, the point spread. This year, the point spread is 0, 1, 2, and 4. That means that you're going to get 0 points for making contact with your opponent, but it will be acknowledged by the judges. You'll get 1 point for meeting the quality criteria, which I'll describe in a minute. You'll get 2 points total for meeting the quality criteria and striking the target criteria, which has changed slightly this year. And then you get four points for meeting the control criteria and the target criteria and the quality criteria when making contact with your, uh, with your opponent using a valid striking surface of the weapon. Uh, likewise, the failed withdrawal scoring this year uh, has been simplified out a little bit uh, and to prevent a couple of the uh, inconsistencies we saw last year. Uh, essentially, a failed withdrawal Meaning, uh, for example, Josh comes and, and hits, uh, hits Will, um, and then as he's pulling away, Will hits him in return with a revenge strike or an afterblow. Josh here has failed to withdraw, delivered a good hit, but wasn't able to with withdraw safely. The failed withdraw maxes out the total number of points you can get to one, and that's only on a target hit. So, if Josh strikes Will, Anywhere except for about for the valid target, getting the, the target bonus points, getting head or torso. So let's say Josh strikes Will on the arm, and then as Josh retreats, Will strikes Josh anywhere. Josh will score no points. However, should Josh land a blow on Will's you know, face, as he withdraws, Will hits him anywhere. Josh will earn one point. Uh, grapples have also been uh, spread out across the same point spread, 0, 1, 2, and 4. I'll describe what that means in a little bit. Uh, and then finally, the mercy kill rule has been changed to 6 points. So if you lead your opponent by 6 points, if your most recent hit was a clean hit, uh, then you will win the match uh, automatically. 
All right, um, a new rule this year is the last exchange rule. The way that that works is that your last exchange will always be at least 10 seconds long. So what that means is if you have 11 seconds left on the clock and uh, uh, you're fencing, pop, 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 and the, uh, at the end of 11 seconds the bell rings and nobody's hit anybody, that's it, the match is over. However, if you have 11 seconds left on the clock and you're fencing, pop, 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 somebody gets hit, there's three seconds left on the clock now, the, uh, the, the timekeeper will add 10 seconds to the clock, now making it 13 seconds, and that will be the last exchange, whether the bell ring runs out or somebody hits somebody uh, or not. So that way, the final exchange of the, of the round is always at least 10 seconds long. Um, no one will call last exchange when the, uh, well, no one will call last exchange in the middle of the bout, the way that we see at Swordfish or the way that uh, uh, ran in some of the league events earlier this year. Uh, last exchange is time added if the, if the uh, uh, if an exchange ends with less than 10 seconds on the clock, uh, and that's only done once. You can't keep on last exchanging uh, uh, forever. Let's see, all right. Uh, one other thing that we want to clarify because of some of the things that we're seeing in, in different leagues, and uh, both both uh, for example the Long Point League and in the uh, uh, Nordic League, uh, is point refusal and protests. The long point rules do not allow for protests. If you don't like what the judges call, you may not protest. Uh, that being said, if you see some kind of consistent problem, you are always welcome to call the referee over, uh, or the, the director over, and explain to the director that you think a certain thing is happening, and the director will take that into account. But you cannot make a formal protest. You can refuse points, and when you refuse points, you refuse all points awarded to you in a particular instance. So if you don't want the points that you received, because you don't feel that you earned them, uh, or because you feel that the, the exchange should have gone a different way, you're welcome to say, uh, Director, I refuse those points. But you cannot refuse the points in part, you may only refuse the points in whole. All right, uh, finally I want to remind everyone that uh, uh, the Director uh, has the ability to assess penalties uh, at any time, uh, yellow cards and red cards. Uh, I won't go into great detail as to what those are, but just remember that uh, any behavior that is uh, disruptive, dangerous, uh, otherwise jeopardizes the match, uh, your, your, the, the other people uh, at, the, at the event, including the person that you're fighting, um, or uh, is intentionally obstructed in some fashion, will be penalized immediately, leading to a loss of a few points from the match, or loss of the match, or ejection from the tournament at large. Okay. Uh, clarification on the power of the director. Uh, the director essentially has complete power over the match and uh, determines uh, sort of who did what with the input from the other fencers. Uh, as a general rule, the director will not overrule uh, any call made by three, um, unit, by three judges. If, if three judges agree on a call, even if the director disagrees, as a general rule, the director will either uh, go with those three judges or will be forced to call no exchange. Uh, likewise, a judge is not going to call a clean hit uh, or a decisive hit in any direction without at least one other judge agreeing, so there must be two judges agreeing. The judge, however, can always simply throw out a match if the judge strongly feels that, that match didn't go the way that the judges saw. Okay, I'm going to go into a, uh, a detailed point breakdown um, at this time. All right, so first is contact. So our, our fencers here are fencing. Uh, Will uh, strikes uh, at his opponent. Go ahead, Will. And hits his opponent in the face in this particular instance. Um, the, nothing else happens, the fighters break apart, uh, and now we have, a, we have the opportunity for the, uh, for the judges to call out what happened with the batons. The first thing that the judges are always gonna call, and the judges issue two calls for every single match. The first thing that the judges are going to call, reach into my pants here, pull out my batons. Here, hold on. All right, so the first thing that the judges are going to call is what kind of exchange it was. There's a number of kinds of exchanges. Essentially, the exchanges run like this. I don't know what happened. Or, nothing happened. The red fighter got a clean hit. The blue fighter got a clean hit. The red fighter hit the blue fighter, but failed to withdraw. The blue fighter hit the red fighter, but failed to withdraw. They hit each other at the same time in a nasty, ugly, messy, their swords didn't connect, it wasn't a mistake, it was just stupid, right? And what we call the closed double, which is a double when the swords are both in contact or crossed in some way, meaning both fighters are trying to do the right thing, but they did it poorly. 
Each of these is scored a little bit different. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. So a hit lands, like what we just saw there, while hitting Josh in the face. Uh, the director calls halt. Uh, the director calls judges. The judges will look down and flag, being hit for red, being hit for blue, failed withdraw, failed withdraw, double, or close double. In this particular instance, if uh, Will is the, the, blue, the blue fencer, they would look down and they would flag like this. Then the director will say, score four, and he will issue a color. In this case, he's going to say, score for blue, since all of the judges meet, agreed, the blue hit cleanly. He'll say, score for blue. If it had been this, he would still say, score for blue. If he said this would be score for red, if it was this, he would say, score for red. If it was this, he would call it a double, and we would move on. If it was this, he would call it close double, no exchange, and move on. Now, in this instance, we have clean hit for blue. Next, he says, score for blue, at which point, uh, the judges will hold the baton out to show that it was a quality hit, and then will gesture to the body part that it landed on, at which point the director will determine that that is a quality hit to the head, so it gets the extra points for target, and the target area this year is head, neck, shoulders to the seam, and torso to the waist, or right, at the bottom of the jacket bag. Uh, last year, uh, under the arm was not considered target for cuts. It is again this year. Okay. Uh, now, what if it had been a failed withdrawal? There you go. Stay. All right, so, same scenario. Will comes in, hits in the face, right? Ah, oh, good. So, in this case here, he's got a bind, the blow has come through, and hit in the head. As Will is pulling his sword away and running away, Josh drives his point into the neck. The judges flag, blue hit, but failed withdrawal. Then, the director says, score for blue. On score for blue, uh, they just score for blue, and they do this, right? So the scoring component is the same, but because it was a failed withdraw, the director will only award one point. All right, now let's talk about open and close doubles real fast. Uh, this is all over the place. Uh, let's say that uh, Josh here swings for the knees, while Will swings for the head, and they both hit. All right, this is an open double. This is bad. Three of these, and you will lose the match in the pools. Uh, or it will uh, lead to a point uh, penalty going forward in the, in the elimination. This is bad. Back up. On the flip side, let's say they both cut over how, they both try to wind, and they both stab each other in the neck at the same time. Good enough. All right, so they both stab each other at the same time. The blades are in contact. They were trying to do the right thing, but they did it badly. And under this idea that uh, Tournaments and competitions are essentially a training tool. We want to acknowledge that they did the right thing, but that they did it badly. So that would be the closed double. All right, now, uh, hold that again. So, in order to score, you first must make contact. We established quality. Let's talk real fast about the basic requirements for quality. In order to score the points for quality, the blade, on a cut, the blade needs to travel. Josh, you need to travel at least 45 degrees of rotation. Okay? So that means that you could, say, go into a long point, long point kind of line, right? That you could come up from here and strike to there, and that's still a quality blow. 45 degrees of, uh, of rotation is, is enough. Less than 45 degrees of rotation is not going to be enough to earn the point of quality. It's still contact. We'll still break up the match. We'll still acknowledge that you hit the guy, but you won't score any points for it. The next big requirement is that uppercut you must hit with the weak of the blade, right? From the middle to the tip with the weak of the blade. So, uh, come very close together, guys. Uh, let's see, Josh, grab his arms. All right, hit him, hit him uh, in the head with a strong right there. So that, that thump right there, especially tends to happen under the ribs and a lot of grapples, is not gonna be scored for quality, okay? If you, need, if you want quality on a, uh, on a slice, I mean, or a draw cut, it must travel at least half the length of the blade, but I don't care if it's strong or weak. Uh, if you want to thrust the count, it simply must make contact in such a way that it's clear. You don't have to bend the blade in half to get points for a thrust. Uh, that said, a rogue blade is always easier for the judges to see, and we want to make it easier for the judges to see. Target area for two points, as I mentioned, is the head, shoulders to the seam, uh, and torso. Control. There are, we have simplified the criteria for control significantly. Uh, this is the uh, objective way for control going forward this year. Please pay attention. It will help clarify some things. Any strike that you make while binding the other guy's sword, so go into a bind, will wind up and, uh, uh, let's see, if you like a duplicator, and uh, hit Josh in the face. Okay, there. Any strike made 
while in contact, I see that's the wrong side of the guy. All right, here we go. Let's lift up, All right, boom. Something like this, where we see the blades are in contact and in between the other guy and you hit him. A strike made to a target to you know, the bonus target area while the blades are in contact is control, period. Right, I don't care especially how you got there. Likewise, uh, rewind. Uh, if, uh, if uh, let's see, go into Fonta, go into Ox, will thr um, just thrust him in the chest. Okay, now cut so that it gets trapped in. And then on the side, like that. This happens sometimes, right? The thrust lands and then the cut hits. That will also earn the point for control. Okay, uh, second. The second way to earn a control point is using a, a schnitt, like a pressing, a pressing cut or a slice, or a push or some other grappling technique to disable his weapon or hands. Uh, rewind. Let's see, uh, let's see, uh, Josh, uh, give him, give him a hand slice and then put him in the face. Pull up, push down, and then cut him in the face. That would also be a control point. Okay. The third way to get control point is to throw your opponent to the ground. Uh, to have them pinned in some fashion or otherwise be fully dominant and to present your weapon as a threat. Uh, full rules for scoring grapples, uh, for scoring uh, other things are contained in the rules. Please read them, but this is a basic primer and should get you started. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in less than three weeks.